working essayist, a novelist, and she then be uh, be uh, can I start again? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that was so <laughs> weird. It was like a bubble. It was like <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Anna Cosgrave, and I'm the founder of the Repeal Project, and I work part time for Lynn Ruan. had kind of known from a young age like in secondary school with a teacher uh, we had set up this thing called Students Unite for Children's Health it was called Such and we ran kind of fashion show and even back then we kind of designed t-shirts and I remember we picked a charity and it raised like 30 grand and it was through kind of creative means that you were able to kind of empower people to feel part of something whilst also then at the end having like a little bit of money to help uh, an under-resourced organisation do what they're trying to do. Think of the sex education system in Ireland. It's garbage. It's absolutely nonsensical and terrifying that young people aren't given information about sex and then just the consequences of that are really, really terrible we have such a cultural shame all around sex education and yeah really it, it's because of the intrinsic link between the church and state and primary schools are, are owned by the catholic church i know uh, working for lynn has really she's extremely into like sex positive parenting and just kind of shifting this idea and just kind of normalizing the whole conversation around sex and I know it's something that I'm extremely passionate about that I get so nervous when I think of girls in primary school maybe getting a few hours at which point it's far too late it's 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 all it's all massively linked like don't provide people with information then when a consequence arises out of not having that information then like punishing them shaming them like what 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 are we expecting and like we know if we look across at other countries where they have a really really uh, kind of normalized early sex education system that teen pregnancy that crisis pregnancy that um you know kind of uh, stds everything is like dramatically reduced but yeah, I see it as a massive kind of cornerstone uh, of, of, of equality and of feminism. Um, I had listened to Catherine Corliss, I think it was on Vincent Brown. It was had been two years previous and she had with her uh, a man who uh, is a survivor of the mother and baby homes. So it was on, on my radar, but like isn't it just it's just the beginning and i felt i still feel just like where are the answers there's people who've been put through indescribable oh god so gonna turn around for a sec i think there was just such a collective kind of disgust when the tomb baby kind of story and tragedy just re-arose I felt just I, I don't know just like where are the answers you know where is the justice for these people the pain it's like the agony that hundreds and thousands of Irish women and families uh, have been put through and the secrecy and the lost lives and yeah it just leaves such a kind of sour taste in your mouth when it's the same kind of institutions that we entrust with our education uh, systems and that you know I, I would I would have been excited on my communion day and I imagine like the girls you know this year that are making their confirmation you know unbeknownst to them that if they found themselves in a crisis pregnancy situation not so long ago that they would have been essentially uh, kidnapped and uh, enslaved and maybe their babies potentially would have died. I'd say to anyone that's like undecided or on the fence is again <laughs> it's like listening and talking and that's all it it doesn't take very long once you just have a conversation with someone and kind of just explain to them the reasons why like this is you know a human rights issue and that it affects every woman in Ireland from the moment they're of childbearing age and the thing as well is that the eighth amendment isn't just 
just about abortion it's about all of maternal health care and essentially how we view women uh, in Ireland and whether we see them as equal or not or, or whether, whether or not we trust them that it's 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 a really yeah, yeah it's just so important oh the march was amazing yeah, was like there's like 12,000 people um yeah like it's there's a groundswell it's unstoppable I think the abortion rights campaign the march for choice for this year was so good now given how many came out on international women's day i really am just so enthused and excited for th uh, the one this year it's i think it's great that you know when someone wears one that there could be a woman who has traveled and that might see it and if that makes her marginally feel better um, that kind of makes me want to want to keep going that the main factors were 2012 going to Savita's vigil and just being so haunted outside government buildings holding a candle I just couldn't believe that the country that you know I live in had let this happen to someone and when I went back to my dorm uh, in college I just begun just researching some of the statistics and I hadn't realized at that point I mean, how would I, that, you know, up to 12 women were leaving a day and then just kind of the cookie crumbled, I think. And I had seen Gloria Steinem wearing a T-shirt that said I had an abortion on it. And I imagined if someone wore that in Ireland, what would happen? Then last year, I went to a talk that her.ie were having on the Eighth Amendment. And there is uh, amazing speakers and Colm O'Gorman from Amnesty. Uh, who's just really, really exceptional, was speaking and he was saying kind of about, you know, don't be passive and use your anger in a productive way offline. And that really resonated with me because I was just sharing articles constantly, but I just felt really restless that I wasn't actively doing something. And there's so many ways you can contribute. And I had gone to the March for Choices and I really loved like the work that the abortion rights campaign do. I knew I wanted to do something kind of in tandem with them. And then, yeah, I just played around with a few designs. I asked some different people for advice. It was really difficult because l loads of people told me that like repeal, you know, it was too simple. People wouldn't understand it. That did I really think people would actually wear it? That black and white uh, is too funereal. Um, but there was, yeah, just something in my gut and then, yeah, just went for it. Biggest challenge with the project? I suppose it's, and anyone that um, is kind of involved, whether loosely or spends a lot of time, you know, when you put yourself out there, you know, there are kind of repercussions and this is such uh, an emotive issue that some people get incredibly angry and uh, very, very offensive. So some of the challenges is kind of just learning how to not use up your emotional energy on some of the backlash to kind of just channel that into the positive, productive kind of aspect of what you're doing. And then I suppose it's just in life in general it's just kind of getting getting the balance like I I think everyone finds that hard and I certainly am just learning how to just basic stuff is in terms of like routine and self-care. Um, we've got a fundraiser gig on April 23rd and this is David Gray and Mary Black and Loa and a whole array of kind of activists and speakers and poets and it's kind of a, a celebration um, of kind of what's happened in the pro-choice movement in Ireland, but it's also kind of a call back and a call out and just um, s supporting any woman uh, who's ever traveled. And we're just hoping just to fundraise uh, a little bit of money and yeah, just again, bring a little bit of visibility. If you want to get involved in a repeal project, if you check out the website in the summer, there's going to be loads of different ways. Uh, repeal projects launching businesses for repeal. So we're going to identify thousands of pro-choice businesses all across Ireland. If you want to volunteer, there'll be more ways to get involved. 
in terms of the, the abortion rights movement in Ireland, there is www.repeal8.ie, which is the coalition. That's an alliance of over 80 pro-choice organizations. So there's so many, uh, there's definitely one for you if you're listening. Um, and then the abortion rights campaign, they are you know, four or five years old. They run the march every year. They have groups in loads of different towns all over Ireland, and there's loads of different groups within ARC. So yeah, you should find one.